What's up? Welcome back. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm James. I'm a product designer and I design music equipment, music instruments, all things music and all things design. If you're into those things, you're at the right place. Uh, and in this video series or live series, I should say, I'm designing a drum machine, a digital hardware drum machine, and I'm doing the CAD design. So mechanical design on these streams. Uh, and I'm working in SOLIDWORKS, which you can see here. And this is the device as it is right now. G'day, mate. <laughs> G'day. LK, you going, man? Welcome back. Love having you here, as always. Uh, yeah, this is the device as it is right now. Um, it's basically a like aiming towards a hi-fi prototype or... Um, as in a high fidelity prototype instead of a low fidelity prototype. And it will be kind of like something like a EV, EV phase, like a um, electronic evaluation or design evaluation. But yeah, it's a prototype just to test a few different things, but it's something similar to what the end device will be, although um, not the same. So it's kind of like a, a prototype or a testing platform, that kind of thing. Um, yesterday I put in a Raspberry Pi in the corner here. That's what we're going to use for the prototype, though it won't probably be used in the final product. And I made a cutout in the PCB for it to fit in here. Today I want to constrain the height of this Raspberry Pi because it's sort of just floating here. Um, I kind of need to make the whole device a tiny bit taller just so that it can fit in there nicely. And then I need to decide if I want to have um, if I want to have the pins, <laughs> uh, or if, sorry, if I want to have these two boards at different heights, because it's kind of preferable for me to have this board a little bit higher up, uh, because it's going to have switches on it, and it did have switches on it until I broke them yesterday. Um, so the closer this board is to the top, the better, uh, but this one has to sit a bit lower. I just have to figure out how to connect, um, this to this, whether it's with a ribbon cable or another PCB with some socket, uh, some header sockets on it. Uh, I'm leaning more towards having it something like this at the moment, whether at different heights, but we'll see. Um, then if I finish that, I will probably try to add the buttons back in. Um, I can add some holes in the enclosure for the jacks on the, the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to... Uh, I could model in some, some potentiometers although I might try and put something in to show how this is going to connect to the main PCB. So uh, I'm just going to add that to my list of things to do. And then I'll get started. And uh, how you going, Elk? What are you up to? Uh, board to board connector. Okay. What's happening here? Okay. Just playing some music for my wife while she's drawing. Oh, nice, man. That's such a good bonding activity. What kind of music are you playing today? And say hi to your wife for me. <laughs> um, okay, height of the Raspberry Pi. So for this, I'm going to need to put in some extra sketches. I have a reference top sketch. Oh, she says hello. <laughs> That's nice. Um, thank you. <laughs> Don't know what else to say. Um, so... Yeah, so I've got this reference sketch here. 
uh, for the top view, I'm going to need to make one for the front view so I can show where or what the height of these jacks is and what kind of holes I need for them. And same thing with these ones. So that'll be a drawing, a sketch on the right plane, I think. I actually play my own pieces by hand when we're drawing. I do not record any of it, even though it's my best work. <laughs> well, do you want to record it? Could be, could be good, you know, could be a good idea. Although maybe it could be a bit of the, the psychological thing of when you know something's recording, you, you don't play as well. <laughs> I'm a little bit skeptical about whether or not these are the right jacks for this PCB because they don't even fit there. So that's a bit sketchy. Um, hmm. <laughs> Might need to try and find a better model of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm actually considering live streaming a bit when I'm noodling and coming up with ideas. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It's probably interesting to watch. Are those the USB-C ones? Well, one is. The other two are micro HDMI, I think it's called. Or mini HDMI. No, I think it's micro HDMI. Um... Yeah, the Raspberry Pi 4 supports dual display out output and I think even at 4K. So you can have two 4K monitors plugged into these. We've even considered the possibility of having a HDMI output on the device to output like um, some kind of visualizer that's like generated by the drum beats. I actually have seen those and surprisingly have a cable for it. <laughs> You're a cable hoarder too. Somehow I managed to have a cable for just about everything. Um, okay, for some reason... Wait a minute. Ah, this is the assembly. Why isn't that fully defined? I wonder. I can't move it. Can't move that either. And I can't move that. It's weird. Anyway. Um found cables for gear I don't even own yesterday. Not even sure why I had them lol. Maybe you're also a cable thief. <laughs> I've had that before, like, especially in bands when you meet up with the band to uh, have a jam session or a practice or something somehow one person ends up with too many cables or more cables than they should have had. <laughs> I'm the only musician on this block and I don't share gear. Mm, that's weird. Maybe came in a box with some secondhand gear or something. All right. Oh, what did I do? I think this will work and then it didn't and just dropped into the void. <laughs> I will say that you seem to pull the trigger 
uh, somewhat quickly when you decide to buy gear. <laughs> I, sometimes I do that too, but then sometimes I wait like years before I buy something because I'm, I don't know, paranoid about spending money or something. Um... Sold off four pieces of gear this week. <laughs> that was a grand back in the pocket. You need to start buying more stuff on Amazon, and then you can just return it. Too nice to my sweet water rep. Fair. I bet he loves you. <laughs> um, can you give me a point here? So you had any luck with the sales? These sketches for these jacks are going to be a bit annoying to recreate, I think. I'm going to have to position everything. Yeah, it's not going to be good. some split entities. So I'm splitting this top line on the PCB so that I have like a measurable distance between each jack so I can make lines equal to these lines. Um, yeah, that should be enough for this sketch. And then I'll do one on the right. God, they make it so hard to rename sketches, whatever. <laughs> Reference right. 
right. What did I do? <clears throat> When's the uh, interface arriving? Excuse me. By the way, I don't know if it looks like my eyes are all fucked up, but I've been getting some hectic hay fever today. My eyes have been very itchy. Don't lie, bro, you were hanging out with Yesu before the streams. <laughs> no, no. Those days are gone for me. I was worried it was going to look like I'm crying. Definitely not crying. Had a pretty reasonable day, to be fair. Nothing to cry about. Now you said it out loud, it's canon. <laughs> What's canon? Said what? I didn't say nothing about nobody. This is reference, right? Ellen's reference front. Um, and I might just. reference this to the other sketches instead. So there's a few less references to the actual 3D geometry. I don't know why I want to do that, but I feel like it's safer for some reason. Keep that one. Oh, I 
I forgot to split my lines here. Elk, have you ever dabbled into the world of virtual reality? Like VR headsets and stuff? Been looking into it a little bit today. Yes, my dad is into that stuff. Mm. Um, tried it before and it's not for me. Fair. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh, my brain. I heard it's badass for doing digital sculpting. Yeah, so, w I mean, it, it came up at work because we were talking about, um, like, uh, Apple is having this dev conference in the next few days. Like, I think it's some point this week. I don't know which day. Uh, ah, shit. That's the wrong sketch. Um, yeah, so people are like predicting that they're going to announce their their virtual reality or mixed reality. And um, yeah, we're all trying to predict like what is their target market going to be? Because I find it hard to believe that Apple would care much about gaming. So... Yeah, my guess would be that uh, that it's going to be like some some creative realm, I guess. It'll be augmented reality, most likely. Yeah, but like, do you really th do you think you can really just sell augmented reality? More ads pumped direct to your eye sockets. <laughs> Hell yeah. I feel like drinking a Coca-Cola for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, it depends how much the thing is going to cost. Um, I'd wear them on my motorbike. Yeah, I'm just curious, like, do you think you could safely wear them on a motorbike? <laughs> imagine having a turn-by-turn -turn directions in your view when riding. That would be cool, yeah. But imagine if the cameras on the pass-through fail or the battery dies, <laughs> and then you're, like, blind trying to get it off your face. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I if it's expensive, then it's I'm going to be wondering like how how they're going to convince people to buy this thing just so that they can have like a, some virtual monitor floating or on their desk or something. Uh Yelp reviews of restaurants while looking at shops. Yeah, that could be cool. But then like is everyone going to be walking around wearing things on their face? Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can flip this thing horizontally. I don't know if that's actually possible. I've never tried that in SolidWorks. Move entities, rotate entities, scale entities. I 
tried to scale it by negative one. Can I do that? No. It's Apple in the largest consumer economy in the world. Of course, everyone will have them. <laughs> True. But I doubt mobile tech like that will be ready before 2030. Well, yeah, I'm like, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Apple products or being in the ecosystem, but I am glad Apple exists in the sense that I think whatever they release, whether it's for me or not for me, probably won't be for me, but it will make people care about VR um and then everything like then the the technology will boom from there and then there'll be a headset that is for me that is sort of made possible because of apple sort of making it cool you know what i mean like smartphones existed before iphone but they kind of sucked and to me, iPhone also kind of sucked, but it sucked way less than all the other smartphones and it made it popular. And then um, now there's good smartphones, you know? It's a status thing here, lol. Yeah, I think it's a status thing everywhere. Uh, stretch entities. Maybe that'll work. Stretch about this. Wait. It didn't stretch anything. What is that stretching? Weird creatures, us humans. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely not an only a status thing in America. Like, I've always had people who were like, ew, you got an Android. Like, ew, you got an iPhone. <laughs> it's just, you know, people say Apple are like, great innovators i agree that they're innovators just they're not innovators of technology they're innovators of marketing we filthy green bubbler i'm mi missing the reference there sorry <laughs> all right i just need a what am i gonna do Can I do this? What the hell? Why wasn't that connected? Oh no. Come on, stop doing weird stuff. This will work, I think. Actually, I didn't even need to flip it, really. It's on the same shit. Um, my buddy refused to text me because my message came in green and not blue. When I got an iPhone, he text lol. Wait, so you were on the iPhone, he was on Android. Is that right?
Oh, you were on an Android. He was on an iPhone. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. See, I don't even know what the fucking colors mean. Like, every phone I've had is different colored text. Like, what the fuck's a green and a blue text? <laughs> Texts are like letters. They're not fucking colors. What are you talking about? Green text. Yeah, he loves his brands. It's, yeah, it's just a senseless, like... I don't know, senseless thing that, like... You're supposed to have this, so... If you have this, you're good. If you don't have it, bad. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of Apple is because they encourage that. Like that's what their that's their goal. That's what sells for them. And it seems like that's their main strategy. Um Blue just means iMessage between iPhones and green is Android to iPhone, so they can judge you. Yeah, it's stupid. It's like social manipulation. Like, the whole idea of, um, I can't hate them. I use an iPad and, I'm a, and a Mac for music, yeah. I mean, the products aren't bad products. It's just, um, like they they engineer it in a way to make it um good for the company and bad for the user in my in my opinion uh what was i saying planned obsolescence yeah i mean that's one thing it's but it's like they're always trying to close the ecosystems and block any um, compatibility with third-party devices and stuff. And they lock you into a, an ecosystem that forces you to give them money and makes it really difficult for you to try any other competitors. It's like super anti-competitive behavior. And limits your customers so like they have to do whatever you allow them to do it's like it's shit yeah and the anti-right to repair exactly like um you know nobody knew what they were going to do when uh when they made it so they couldn't um you know when they brought in the USB-C regulations yeah you're you're at one, and now Apple has to produce units with USB C. Yeah, exactly. But even still, after that, they tried to they tried to pull, like, they tried to pull that move again, where they went, okay, well, we're, they're forcing us to use USB C, but we're gonna make it so they c they can only use USB C chargers, um, that are like Apple certified. And they would have some like data checker to check if it's Apple certified because they don't want you to use third party charges. They want to have the charges under their control so they can make money from those as well. It's just like at every opportunity, they're trying to just like, uh, make more and lock you in more, you know? They have some chip they put in there for phone to recognize. Exactly. And they do the same, same thing with repairs. Like they did that with, you could buy replacement displays and replacement um, batteries and stuff, but it has to have the chip in it that's from Apple so that you can't buy it from somewhere else. And so they can have control over who is allowed to install the the displays and all that kind of shit. It's just crazy. Uh, pi height. No, I, 
actually need to add something on the top of here because that's not the top of the jacks. Um, that's why they employ Apple geniuses. Yeah, exactly. Geniuses. No, but I mean, a lot of this stuff frustrates me and I could rant about it for years, but, um, and I have, <laughs> but at, you know, at the end of the day, like the, they do make good products. I can't argue with that. Um, some of them are good, you know, in general, I'm not really a fan of their operating systems. Like I don't like Mac OS and, um, iOS. Cause I also feel like the, like people always praise them for the, the UX. I actually think the UX is so bad. Like it's impossible to do things without knowing all the shortcuts. So like, um, They don't have, like, it's a steep learning curve, I would say. I don't use my Mac for anything other than web browsing and door work. Yeah, it's like, um, once you learn all the, the shortcuts and stuff, it's fine. But before you learn all the shortcuts, it's like super unintuitive. And the, it's so difficult to get a Mac machine set up. Like, um, at my old, at mod, uh, the boss bought a Mac mini for recording videos for like capturing and stuff. Um, and like even just getting OBS in installed took ages, like so many like security pop-ups and like you're not allowed to install this because it's from this developer and you have to go in and change settings and it's such a pain in the ass and then like you open OBS and it doesn't work and like yeah I don't know I think a lot of people come from like their first laptop is like a something very basic some basic Windows laptop you know like some cheap HP or something. And then at some point they decide, I want to get a nice laptop and they buy a MacBook and their only frame of comparison is like some shitty HP. And they go, oh, wow, like MacBooks are so much better than Windows laptops. And like Mac OS is way better than uh, Windows because they're using like all they've used in the past is like something really shit. So of course it's going to be shit. I mean, of course it's going to be way better. But yeah, ranting again. <laughs> this could be my shtick. Just rant while do, doing CAD. Uh, Yeah, sorry, I missed a few messages. Video editing too. Um, yeah, and sometimes it takes me a bit to find what I need. Trust me, bro, I went through all that a while ago. I went into recovery mode and killed the security protocols for installing apps. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, you can fuck things up on Windows too, but... And I'm obviously biased because I've been using Windows all my life. But, like, um, I've also spent a lot of my life constantly learning how to new use new equipment and use new software and I'm a UX engineer, you know, <laughs> like it's my profession. And when I use a, a MacBook, I'm just like, what the hell is this? But like, the 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 look and the feel and the the build quality and everything is is like amazing love it they make really good quality physical hardware devices 
Uh, the software is crap though. I'm a technology person who hates technology. <laughs> yep, <laughs> feel that. Yeah, but that just shows you're passionate, you know. You have to learn to survive these days. What do you mean by that? To be honest, there is so much new technology coming out that can improve a lot of things. But learning it all is, as someone who grew up with VHS, is a slog. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I mean, uh, I feel like it doesn't matter how old you are. You can figure, you can figure this stuff out. Like my dad is in his late 60s now and he once worked for a news station operating computers that were that would take up a whole room and they were storing like the storage was on tapes and stuff and he still picks up uh smartphone stuff pretty well and like he's into photography so he's always editing photos and he tries out new editing software and stuff like lately he's been using um, Topaz, Topaz Labs, um, what's it called, Gigapixel, like this AI upscaling thing, and, you know, it's like 67 or something, can still figure out how to use an AI, AI upscaling tool, which is pretty good, I think, anyway, then again, he does mess up a lot of things on his smartphone, so... <laughs> My kids grasp stuff today way faster than I did. Yeah. More more grey matter. <laughs> That's who, how I do stuff too. Also, Topaz is amazing. Yeah, Topaz is sick. I got the video one. Um, I forget what it's called. Uh, I was going to snag the Topaz bundle for video and photo editing. Yeah, I just got the video one. Like... I think there's three for photo editing and there's just one for video and I got the video one. Um, and to be honest, I haven't used it that much. I, I just haven't, like, it takes a pretty long time to process. And I've got a, a decent PC, but it's getting a bit old now. I've got a an RTX 2070 graphics card in here, in it. And, um, I mean, it can chug through some decent processing but yeah I want to bulk process like lots of footage and I don't know it takes a long time plus it's kind of annoying that you have to choose the model that you want to upscale for each video like each video would look better with a different model so it's a lot of work to go through and then choose what model would look best for each because you have to kind of generate a preview and that takes a little bit of time and and then if it doesn't look good with that model, you've got to generate a preview with a different model. And I don't know, it's a bit of a fuck around, to be honest. I love working with technology like that. I do a lot of AI art, so photo editing stuff is amazing. I wanted the video stuff so I could limp along with the action cams I use re for recording. What do you mean limp along? <laughs> Okay, got my PCB height sketch here. So I can finally mate the height of the pi. Sorry, pi height sketch. And the legs are sticking through the bottom of the device. So that's not good. 
I've made the whole device 25 mil tall, 25 millimeters. I think I'm going to have to stretch it to 26. Um, I fight for exposure a lot and get grainy video. I saw that Topaz stuff can mitigate that. Um, but there is a new camera being developed in Singapore I'll be pursuing. Yeah, I mean, noise is a problem for me too. But um, DaVinci Resolve has... a when you, when you have the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, it's got a really decent noise removal tool. And it's possible that Topaz could do it better. But um, DaVinci Resolve just does it so much faster. So I'm like, I've got the AI tools. Same with upscaling, like DaVinci Resolve can upscale, but it's an algorithmic upscale. It's not um, an AI, it's not a machine learning upscale. So it's not as good as Topaz would be, but it's just so much faster than I'm like, can I really be fucked using Topaz? Because it gets almost as good of a result with, um, with DaVinci Resolve, so. Uh, I use the free one, Final Cut Pro is working again, so I may look into that feature. Wish I bought DaVinci instead of Final Cut. Yeah, I think DaVinci is definitely worth the money. For sure. And like, yeah, this is, this is just me, but I would never buy Final Cut or Logic. I mean, I know that they work great. And if you got a MacBook, that's great. But I, I don't want to limit myself to ever having to use one, one operating system. Like, yeah, SolidWorks is only available on Windows. Uh, so yeah, I kind of just debunked my my theory <laughs> right there. But um, since DaVinci Resolve exists and you can use it on Mac or Windows, that I prefer that. Um, VR180CuffGlobal.com. What's this? Okay, let me make the device 26 millimeters tall. Hopefully everything will update and move up. Might take a little while. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, perfect. Got a little bit of space above, a little bit of space below. You beauty. I'm going to pledge for that camera. I adopt new tech like an idiot, but I love it. <laughs> All right, let me check this out. This website better be safe. <laughs> Professional 3D VR 180 camera. Oh, that looks cool. Dual Sony CMOS sensors. How big is a CMOS sensor? Or is that just, is that the size or is that just the type of sensor? No, it's just the type. Mm -hmm. 185 degree fish eye. Oh, okay, it's pretty big. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was when I first saw the picture. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. 65 mil IPD. I need to measure what my IPD is. Can you tell me?
What does it say? It's like, wait. Like this one, maybe? 70? Yeah, I got fish eyes. Yeah, dude, I got wide eyes. I got wide set. Need a multi-purpose camera. This one will let, will let me do VR video as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, that that's awesome. You can tell what they're suggesting here. dark side of virtual reality. Oh, that's pretty cool. So is this going to be a Kickstarter or something? Yep. <laughs> Coming soon on Kickstarter. I want to know what size the sensors are. So that'll give you an idea of how good the dynamic range will be and how much, how much, or how sensitive the light will be. I've had a good experience. I've had, I have had good experiences backing Singaporean companies. Okay. Yeah, keep an eye on it. All right, let's put some holes. Let's put some holes in this thing. Oops. Uh-oh. There you go. I'm sure that it will be announced when it launches. I'm hoping it will suit my needs. Anything is better than a GoPro. I mean, GoPros have come a long way. Like my sister recently went on a trip to Bali and she was like, beforehand, she was like, do you think I should get a GoPro? And um, if you had asked me like six months ago, I would have been like, GoPros are just like, they're kind of pointless unless you're using them for action stuff because in most cases like most phones will have as good of a phone, uh, camera if not better and take like higher resolution video and stuff and this is what i was saying like six months or a year ago and um yeah i'm using an old cell phone currently yeah and i thought that i mean actually this would have been like a over a year ago that I had this idea in my head that smartphones are in general way better than a GoPro and there's no point spending the money on the GoPro when your smartphone's just as good and blah 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 and then when I was in Australia I was I brought my I brought my DSLR but I was also taking videos on my phone because I got a new phone and I was like oh this thing can t shoot 4k 60 so whenever I can't be bothered taking my phone my camera out and I only had a 35mm lens. So I was like, if I need a wide angle, I'll just do it with my phone. And it works fine, but there's one limitation on most phones is that they shoot variable frame rates. So depending on how, how much processing power is available, the frame rate will change. So you can tell it to do like 4K 60, but if the phone starts getting hot or if it's like finding it too hard to process or there's some other apps running in the background, it will range from like 60 to zero frames per second. Like the frame rate is constantly changing, which can be really bad because then it can look like jittery when you, because when you play it back on your phone, it plays back at the variable frame rate. But when you put it into an editing software or something, it's going to try to 
put the frames at set intervals. So if at one point it went down to 30 frames per second and you put that in a 60 frames per second timeline, there's going to be two frames that are the same. You know, there's going to be double up of frames, so it'll look kind of jittery in some points. So now I actually think that GoPros are worth the money. <laughs> I have the Hero 7 Black. It's okay. Is it for recording my motorcycle rides for insurance reasons? Yeah. I think it's perfect for that. And I actually... Yeah, my sister asked me about um, getting a camera for her for her trip to Bali. And in the end, I was like, yeah, actually get a GoPro. Like, they're actually pretty good because <laughs> I looked at the specs again and of the newer ones because I hadn't had a GoPro since like the Hero 3 or something and I looked at the new ones I was like actually they're pretty decent uh, rear holes top holes I want right holes These are around the wrong way. Fuck. 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 I think I did these holes around the wrong way. We'll soon find out. Actually, this should be technically left holes. Because it's on the left side of the device. Um, I use the pro settings of my phone camera to set the frame rate. Yeah, you can set the frame rate, but I'm not sure if you can set it to constant frame rate. Like you can set it to be like 60 FPS, but I'm not sure if you can set it to um, constant frame rate instead of variable frame rate so even when you set it to 60 fps it will range from 0 to 60 based on how much load the camera is under what's that noise Yeah, I think GoPros are pretty decent. Like the one that I had, um, it didn't even have a display on the back. Like the old, the really old GoPros just didn't have any disp LCD on them. And um, that made them pretty annoying to use. Okay, let's check how badly I fucked this up. Very badly. <laughs> oh no. That doesn't line up at all. Yeah, so I accidentally put the Ethernet hole here and the USB hole here. Not to worry, I'll fix it.
have I been going? Oh, an hour. Okay. So, pie height. And I need to show this. put all these around the wrong way so that should be equal to that because I rotated the pie 180 degrees that should be equal to wait, we'll do it from this side should be equal to that and that should be equal to that Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. That should fix it. There we go. Cool. I'll put some fillets on these corners. Yeah, so, I don't know, I think GoPros are good. And that, that camera you linked looks almost like two GoPros attached to each other. It's a bit more chunky though, so I hope it has big sensors. <laughs> hate to say it though, but I think that the the main use case for these cameras is going to be R-rated. I think that's their target. That's their, maybe not their target market, but that'll be the number one market. <laughs> that's how I plan to use mine, of course. That's where the money is. All right, let's put some holes in the back. I can close that. Um, just closed it, but I actually needed to open it. Now this part is going to be painful. to flip this around too um 
Have you thought about getting a DSLR? I have one, but it's old. What is it? I need something that will function primarily as a video camera. I think that the Sony Alpha cameras are T3i Rebel. Yeah, I had the same one, uh, but in Australia it's called a um, 500D or 550D or 500D I think it's 500D it's the same camera though I don't know why they had different names in different countries but like uh, the Sony what are they called a 6100 I think or 5100 like the 5100 if you get it with a kit lens Uh, where's one with the kit lens? Here we go. No? If the Sony is cheaper than the calf, I'll go for Sony as they're established. If the discount on Kickstarter camera is more economical, or gamble. Fair. But so, see, the 5100 I think is one of the newer, smaller cameras. And they're not that expensive. Like I think you can get it with the kit lens for like 500 bucks and they shoot like 4k video. Uh, why does it have to give me the German website? Give me America. Oh, now it's lost the camera. Not sure if it's A5100, but the A series, like the 5100, 6100. Oh, they don't have 5100 on here. Maybe they don't make it anymore. Email me when available. I don't know. Maybe they're not available anymore. Oh, that's with two lenses. So this one, most of the A series are over 1.5K. Well, this one's 850. And you can probably find a 5100 maybe for cheaper. But so you can do 4K 30 frames, um, interchangeable lenses, you know, they're pretty decent. And you can plug it in to your computer over HDMI and it will give you a clean signal for your like capture card, which is pretty cool. A lot of people, a lot of streamers use these. Like that's essentially what I'm using, but mine's an A7 II, which is more expensive, but it actually doesn't even shoot 4K. It's only 1080, but it's pretty old now. It's like 2014, I think. So yeah, it's a bit outdated. Oh, 
auf. I use my iPad. Wait. Uh, I use, I'd use my iPad as the viewfinders. I'm good with my phone camera for right now. Haven't been recording any videos recently. Yeah, to be I mean, yeah, to be honest, like even just webcams are fine. Like I still use a webcam for my overhead. This one, which you know, the quality is not that bad. <laughs> Look at these gangly things. <laughs> Uh, at some point doing an upgrade for sure yeah I'd like to do an upgrade too too poor at the moment though I've got long fingers too, don't worry. <laughs> well, it's good for playing music, apparently. Although I'm not that good at it. Okay, if I make these equal... Ah, right, I do need to swap these. Around. Mm. I actually really love playing on keys. Yeah, me too. There's something about the keyboard or piano that just feels so logical. Like, it's such a nice way to understand music theory. Like, all the notes are just laid out in front of you, black and white. It's like, I don't know, I feel like you can see everything in a very easy to understand kind of way. I play expressively though, it's weird to only share sequence stuff, but I feel like my hand played stuff is personal, lol. <laughs> the big dog, this is a blueprint for a berry farm. Well, wow, that's an inside joke if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Big Dog is one of my friends from my hometown and we play some video games together and it's a reference to the video game if you're wondering Elk <laughs> uh, Yeah, it looks like a blueprint, doesn't it? Hey, let's go <laughs> You a gamer? I'm big on Vista myself. Oh, Vidya. Hell yeah. What kind of games? Are you like console gamer or PC master race? I bet you can tell what I am. <laughs> Apple has a very aggressive autocorrect. Yeah, console. Apple is king. <laughs> ben, Ben knows. Oh, sorry, I just doxed your name, Big Dog. His name's Ben, but um, he knows. Uh, he knows how much Apple grinds my gears. 
I had PC but spent way too much time on it. Yup, I know that. <laughs> I feel that in my soul. See, it's a slippery slope when you use a PC for things like CAD modeling and 3D rendering, video editing and stuff. You need to have like a pretty beast PC so you justify making like a really nice gaming PC and then you sit there like, well, be rude not to play some games on it, wouldn't it? James DeBona, big Apple fan. Sorry for the docs. <laughs> I was MWO guy. MWO. Why am I blanking on what that is? With Black Widow Company gaming outfit got my oldest daughter into it. I've been cannibalizing my old tower for parts to improve her experience. What, what? Mech Warrior Online. Mm, didn't know about it. Nice. Well, the big dog and I have been playing Rust. Which is a game that I played first when I was in Australia, probably in like 2017 or 2018 or something. And I hated it. I was like, why the fuck would anyone want to play this? This is horrible. Um, but then I got really addicted to it. Not until I tried it again in like 2019 or something. My wife and I have two big TV TVs wall mounted in our room and we play Zelda together and do split screen, split screen co-op. Split screen like across the two screens. That's pretty cool. Dude, you live in the dream. Your wife sounds cool, by the way. <laughs> My best friend, actually. Well, that's what you want, isn't it? It's perfect. Ben, if only we had partners who were gamers. <laughs> we just need to train them. Preach. <laughs> Maybe then they would understand, you know? Maybe that's the goal. I think that's what Pat's doing, to be honest. He's got it figured out. Just got to stand in GameStop and inhale them game of <laughs> <laughs> They'd be inhaling all the gamma fumes at our places. <laughs> Too many gamma fumes, I'd say. It's probably the problem. My wife picked me up in college, lol. What do you mean, picked you up? 
she found ya. Dude, what the hell? Have I not... How have I not defined this thing yet? What's going on here? Wait, what's going on here? It should be equal to that. All right, we're good. Um, hmm. PCB top. Oh, big dog, are you um on the sesh now? What's happening? Wait a minute. Is today wipe? I've been thinking it's tomorrow night. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that might mean I need to end this stream. <laughs> uh, well, I might quickly finish this then and then jump on. <laughs> Elk, if you're wondering what we're talking about, um, have you heard of Rust before, Elk? The game? Uh, I was like, wipe tomorrow, Pog, thinking ne the next morning, big update. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess you know the, the gist of it. It's like a big open world survival game kind of thing. And um, they have like server wipe every week or every two weeks or every month depending on which server you're on so it kind of resets the whole map once a month uh the one that we play on is a monthly and when it wipes that's like the best time to get on because it's like everybody's starting from scratch again and i was thinking that wipe was going to be tomorrow night and i was like oh, i'm going to be busy it'll be friday night but it's tonight so that might cause the end of this stream. <laughs> um, but first, I'm going to finish at least one task here. I have been streaming for about an hour and a half, which is what I normally do anyway. So, you know, maybe I can uh, justify this ash. Okay, what's going on here? What did I not define? Uh oh. And what's over defined? Okay. Ah. There we go. No worries, Broham. I'm waiting on FedEx to finish my patch bay hookups. Should be here soon. W what are they sending today? You got the cable snakes, didn't you? The interface. Yeah, I'm 90% finished, just need the interface. Hell yeah, dude. 
Oh, God, I love the feeling of getting new equipment. <laughs> How good is it? Um, gonna offset these by maybe 0.5 of a millimeter. Yeah, that looks good. Boom. Okay. Save. Now, is that going to automatically put holes in my enclosure? Let's see. No. Let's do it. Um, looks like we're living in the desert this week. Ooh, a desert. Are you sure? It's an addiction. I'm ready to quit. Lol. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why do all the best addictions cost so much money? Um, where's my rear holes? Show us your rear holes. Um, I'll just do this. Yeah, look at that. Got some nice USB-C shaped holes and some HDMI port holes. Oops. Let's see if it lines up. Hell yeah, dude. Is he good? Oh, <laughs> he's good. Look at that. All right, well, I feel accomplished from that. Uh, actually feel good about getting gear out to other people. Just need my back ordered stuff to ship and then I'm hunkering down for a bit to get some sound design stuff finished. Yeah, nice, man. Yeah, that's, that's always the hard thing is like, okay, I've got some good enough gear for now. Let me smash out some music. <laughs> Bro, that's going to look sick on the table. Yeah, I reckon, man. Like, the guys were saying to me in the beginning, don't worry so much about how thick it is. Like, um, you know, if it needs to be thick to fit lots of jacks in it, then make it thick, like make it tall. And I was like, yeah, but if it's thin, it'll look cool. <laughs> I mean, I can make it even thinner than this. This is 26 millimeters from bottom to top and the the limiting factor is the raspberry pi 4 which isn't going to be in there on the final product so it's a chance a good chance that i can make it thinner in the end but yeah okay how many things did i cross off my list um i adjusted the height for the PCB, uh, for the Pi, and I put the holes in the enclosure. I didn't put the buttons in, I didn't do the pots, and I didn't do the board to board connector. And I do have terrible handwriting. But I did get some stuff done, so I'm happy with the progress. Um, most of my tabletop gear is about the same thickness as a dwarf. Yeah, see, I think if I had to design the dwarf from, squ from scratch, I could have made it even a lot shallower. Uh, 
Yeah, I need to change a few things. The limiting factor on the, the dwarf was the jacks. Like the, it was actually the audio jacks. We used different ones to these and they're a lot taller. I kind of like thick gear. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I don't know. I like the kind of chocolate, chocolate block feel of thin devices. Like it's still chunky enough that it feels like a big chocolate block, you know? Yeah, thick gear feels quality. Yeah, I guess so. But like to me, the Polyan Tracker and the Ableton Push, I think they're like really nicely designed bits of gear that look good. They look, to me, they look quality because they're, they're like, it's like they spend a lot of time figuring out the architecture to make it nice and thin, but it's, they prove themselves by um, how capable they are, you know? So it's not, uh, it's definitely not cheap. So yeah, push three is actually pretty sexy. I agree. I think the push two is really sexy too. If you're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, that's the kind of aesthetic that I'm aiming for. I think like tracker slash Ableton push kind of style. Um, don't know, maybe it ends up being different, but we'll see. But yeah. Happy with where we're at now, so I'm gonna go play video games with the big dog. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks for joining in as always, man. It's so good having you here. It's been great chatting. And um, send some pics when you get the uh, when you get the interface. If not, I'll see it on Instagram, I guess. Catch you next stream. Go swing <laughs> some dogs. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. And um, whoever the other three people are watching, I guess one of them is the big dog himself. But also, thank you very much for joining in. Um, yeah, I mean, I love doing this design stuff anyway, and I would be doing it regardless of whether people were watching. Um, if I wasn't streaming, I would just be listening to podcasts while I do it. So it's awesome that I can do it and get some... Um, you know, some people are interested in it and that for me is like, it's awesome that I can share something cool with people and people enjoy it. So it's great. And it makes me feel a sense of accountability, you know, I don't want to let you down. Um, but yeah, really appreciate any, anyone watching. And if you're watching the video after the stream, thank you for clicking and thanks for watching. If you made it this far, that's amazing um if you like the video please consider uh giving it a like and checking out the other videos as well i've got some more videos on my channel that aren't streams but more like tutorial kind of stuff so check it out if you like it and if you yeah if you like it subscribe or f follow me at any of these um social media platforms my main focus is youtube and twitch at the moment but yeah you can check out my instagram or whatever um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one and, um, yeah, we'd love to have you back and, um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. See you later. <laughs>